In this video, I'm going to walk you through creating four new typography animations for your lyric videos. We will use the Essential Graphics panel to make the animations reusable, using master properties to enable you to change the text to whatever you want. If you're feeling lazy, I've added these four animations to the pack of 24 animations you can pick up on Gumroad for a small price. Patrons can also download the project files, so check that out in the description. Let's dive into number one. So we're just going to come to the type tool here and we're going to type ourselves out some text. So I'm just going to type Holmes motion and we're going to center this and let's increase the font size a bit and we're going to center it and let's set the anchor point to the middle of the text by holding control and double clicking the pan behind tool. Let's scale it up a bit more because we're going to be shrinking the text down later on in the animation. We want the letters to fade in in a random order. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to twirl down the text layer here, click this animate button, select opacity, and down here you can see it's added an animator and a range selector. We'll take the opacity down to zero and we'll twirl down the range selector. And now if we change the offset property, you can see it is fading the letters in from left to right. What we want is for the letters to fade in randomly. So we're going to twirl down advanced and we will select randomize order. Now, if we come back up and we keyframe the offset and let's say one second later on the timeline, we keyframe it to 100%. So it's now going from zero to 100%. We want to change the easing so that it starts off really fast and ends really slow. So one way we can do this is to highlight our keyframes here, press F9, come to the graph editor, right click, make sure we're in the speed graph rather than the value graph. Click one of these handles, the one on the right, and move the handle so the shape looks more like this. And we can make it even more extreme by moving this handle to the left. And now it looks like this. Now we also want to animate the space between the letters or the tracking. So to do that, we're going to create a new animator. So again, we will click animate tracking. And if we play with this tracking value, we can see what it's doing. It's changing the spacing between the letters. So let's set a keyframe at one second for the standard tracking at zero. And let's go to earlier on, let's say 10 frames. Let's increase it to about five. If we move that keyframe to the start, now this is too smooth for me. So what I'm actually going to do is highlight these keyframes, right click and press toggle hold keyframes. This means the values won't smoothly interpolate. They will just change instantly from one to the other. And now what I'll do is at 10 frames, I will put a new keyframe of four. At 20 keyframes, I will put a keyframe of two. And then we have something like this. Let's change the position of some of these keyframes. I'm gonna move them more to the right. So it starts a bit later. And then at one second, I'm going to place a scale keyframe and about 10 frames later, we will scale it down and we will also add some easing for these keyframes. So we'll press F9 and we will change the curve to be like this. Let's bring our keyframe to about two seconds and press N on the keyboard to set our endpoint for the work area. And let's play the animation. It's looking pretty good. I just want to add some more detail to the background. So the way we can do this is duplicate our text layer, bring it behind, highlight the keyframes so that we're changing both at once and scale it up really big. And for this layer, we will in the text panel, disable the fill and enable the stroke. And I'm gonna set the stroke value to about 0.2. We should decrease the opacity of the text in the background to about 30%. And then we have this. So for this one, we're starting off with a text layer that is centered and has a centered anchor point. We will twirl down the text layer. We will click animate and we will click scale. And if we increase this scale parameter, you can see that it's scaling up each individual letter. And if we modify the offset value, we can control which letters it's scaling up. Because it's scaling up each individual letter, we also need to increase the space between the letters. So what we can do is click add on the existing animator that we just added, click property and tracking. And if we then change the tracking to something that looks good, let's say 50, and then we change the offset, it is going to increase the spacing between the letters at the same time that it scales them. 
So let's create a keyframe for the offset of the range selector and let's set it to a hundred percent at 10 frames and zero percent at zero frames. Increase the length of it a bit and we want to add some easing. So again, F9, come to the curve editor and we want it to start off fast and finish slow. And let's increase the duration again. So we will decrease the scale a little bit. And what we will do is add some more interest to the background by duplicating our text layer. Again, bringing it below, changing it to just have stroke and no fill. And we will scale it up a lot. Let's scale it up even more and bring it up a bit. And we have something like this. Let's make the scaling much more extreme. So for this scale property, let's pump it up so it's much bigger and increase the tracking as well. And then we have something like this. For this next example, we're going to add two different range selectors, one for the letters and one for the words. So we will twirl down our text layer here and we will click Animate and Opacity. We will set the opacity to 0% and twirl down the range selector and then we can keyframe the offset value, which just kind of controls the opacity from left to right. And we will set an offset keyframe at 0 seconds for 0% and at one seconds, we will set a keyframe for 100%. And then we have this. We also want the letters as they fade in to move from the right to where they're supposed to be. So we will add a new property to our animator by clicking the add button property position. Now we will add a position keyframe of the range selector at zero seconds. And at one seconds, we will change the X position to maybe 90. And then we have something like this. So each letter is sort of moving as it fades in. Now we will layer on top another animator. So I've just twirled the animator back down and I'm going to select it and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. This one, all we have to do is twirl down the range selector under advanced options, change it from characters to words. And then each word is animating from the right and each letter is also animating in from the right. Let's make the word animator a bit more extreme. So we'll come to one second and increase the X position to something much higher. You can play around with those values as you like. Now we will twirl down the text layer and we will duplicate it. We basically want to have two text layers side by side. So we just need to change the scale on these guys until they can both fit on the screen. If you want help positioning them correctly, you can toggle the title slash action safe. And now we can position them using these lines. We also want to add a little bit of leeway if we want to add longer text. So maybe let's go for 50% on the scale but you can just play around with the scale and or the font size to get it correct. And then both of our text elements will animate in. We want to fill some of this space on the top and bottom, which is quite empty. So what we'll do is we will duplicate one of our text layers, bring it down and disable the fill and enable the stroke and then scale these up to a really big size and make sure they're centered. So I'll just use the align panel to center them and do the same at the top. And we have something like this. For the next example, we want to duplicate our starting text layer and we will call one of them stroke and one of them fill. As you probably guessed for the stroke layer, we're going to disable the fill and enable the stroke. And you can see if I move it, the stroke is there. Let's move it back to the center. Let's come to our rectangle tool. Make sure we've deselected our text layers and create a big rectangle something like this. We're going to use this as a mask. So let's rename the layer to mask. Select our fill layer, use the track mat pick whip and drag that onto our mask layer. If you don't have this option, click this button down at the bottom left to enable this column. If we move the mask, you can see what it's doing. Wherever the mask is present, it will show the fill text. So let's move it sort of halfway down and we're going to add an effect to it. If you search for wave warp and add that to your mask, it's going to create this cool little wavy effect. You can play around with the options to your own satisfaction. I'm going to increase the width of the wave, something like this, 
And you can also play around with the height and the speed of the wave, but I'm probably going to leave it as it is. Next, we're going to add a keyframe for the mask at one seconds, a position keyframe. And then slightly after, we will just drag it down so the whole text is visible. Let's change the easing on this so it starts slow and ends fast. Because I've already showed you how to use the easing graph, um, I'm actually going to now use a plugin to do it. This is the Motion plugin. Um, I'll have a link in the description if you're interested. But one of the things it does is it provides a shortcut for changing your easing graphs. So I'm going to use this from now on in the video, but you can do it the manual way like we've done before. So we want it to start slow and finish fast. Now we're going to duplicate our stroke layer four times. Let's highlight these and change the label color to any other color and drag them below. Now we're going to hand position them a bit below and increase the distance each time so they start off close together and gradually get further apart. Now highlight them, press P and add a position keyframe and drag the playhead back to the first keyframe of the mask and use the align tool to bring them back to the center of the composition. We actually want this animation to start on the final frame of the mask animation. So we're going to drag the keyframes forward a bit. And we're also going to change the easing on these guys so that it starts fast and ends slow, which gives us this. Let's drag them back a few frames. And I will also set the starting position of these layers by positioning my playhead at the first keyframe, holding Alt and pressing the open square bracket. And now you can sort of see the momentum of the wave coming down is carried forward into these stroke layers that go below. But now the top half of the composition is a bit empty. It feels a bit off balance. So what we're, get, what we're going to do is create a null layer by coming to layer, new, null object. Make sure it's centered. And we're going to parent everything to the null layer. So pressing control A, just deselecting the null layer itself, and then pick whipping the parent. Now we will add a position keyframe for the null on the same keyframes as below, one before the animation starts, and then one at the finishing point where we will drag it up. We want to make sure that the easing is the same on this null. So we will highlight these keyframes and again, make it start fast and finish slow. And then we have this. So once we finished our animations, we want to make them configurable. The way we're going to do that is to, by using the Essential Graphics panel. So if you come to Window and select Essential Graphics, it will open this window. And in the drop down, you want to select the composition that you currently have open. Essentially, what we want to do is drag into this window any properties that we want to be configurable from outside this composition. So the source text of the text layers is what we want to be configurable because this property allows us to change the text. However, we have multiple text layers. We could drag each source text property into this panel separately like this and just have multiple source text properties, but that would mean we'd need to modify each one of these, which is not very smart. Instead, a much better way of doing this is to create a new text layer and just write some random text in there. Let's rename this to master text. And what we will do is twirl down the source text property for each of these layers. And we're going to pick whip the source text of all of our text layers to this master text source text property. And this means that they will all be equal to whatever the master text source text is. Using this pick whip has essentially added a little expression in here and a quick way we can copy and paste this to all the other text layers is to press edit, copy expression only, and select our remaining text layers and press control V. And you can see now it's changed all the text. And now if we right click and edit our source text to something else, then all the text will update. So now we just drag this master text source text into the essential graphics panel. And what this will allow us to do, for example, if we right clicked this composition and created a new parent composition with this animation inside, if we twirl it down, you will now see this essential properties option. If you twirl that down, you can change the property here. It will bring up a little window like this. So go through all the animations you've created and do this for all of them. So I've just created here a master composition and I've dragged our animations one by one into the comp. 
and without any extra transitions or anything like that, this is what it looks like. Superstar, superstar, you belong to me. And because of how we've used the essential properties panel, what we can do is twirl down each one of our compositions and you should see essential properties and then underneath that your lyric property. So you can actually right click that and click edit value and you can see I've put in here the, the lyric for our song, Superstar, but you can change that to anything you want. And if you set it up correctly, it will just update like this. So this is how you can use these scenes to create your own lyric videos. It doesn't matter what your lyrics are. If the animation is a bit slow, you can speed it up by right clicking time and then time stretch and making it longer or shorter. If you have longer text, so for example here, the text is quite long. So what I needed to do was actually to go into this composition and I created a null and I parented our text layer to the null. And then I actually also dragged in the scale property into the essential graphics for this scene. And that means in our master comp, we can control the scale of the text without changing the scale of the background text. So this means you can add in lyrics which are longer or shorter, and then you can just change the scale property. And you can do the same thing for any of the other scenes as well. And once you've got all your scenes in, you can just add extra stuff to make it look more professional. So for example, I've added in some transitions here, which I got from a plugin. I won't be going into that now, but there are many ways you can find transitions. You can even make them yourself if you want. And now with the transitions, it looks like this. Superstar, superstar, you can learn to live a life with the stars that are like to tell them all. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to like, subscribe, and all that jazz for more videos like this. See you in the next one.